Greetings, owners of fine luxury digital rectangles. Okay, guys, it's time. It's been two weeks. So it's time for episode number 14 of the Splinterlands Market Watch. Uh, we're going to look at all the different tokens and assets in Splinterlands. We're going to look at SPS, vouchers, packs, sets, individual cards, um, some cards that may surprise you that have gone up in value, some cards that have actually completely disappeared off the market. So stay tuned, sit back, get a nice cold drink or warm beverage whichever you prefer because this is probably going to be a longer video and just sit back and relax and let's look at some numbers okay so sps so as you guys know sps has been drifting lower and lower and lower um we've gone under a cent uh two weeks ago we were at um 0 0.0087 cents we are now at uh, 0 0.075 so um, sps continue to drift lower uh, vouchers uh, vouchers two weeks ago we were about 2.2 cents um, we're getting more now into wild with the wild season pass where you can uh, purchase those for 40 vouchers or 2000 DEC so people that have gone the voucher route um, you can get more of a discount now they're under two cents uh, currently they're at 1.72 cents and DEC 4,000 DEC two weeks ago, you were looking at just under 71 cents. Uh, it's rebounded a little bit. Um, we're almost back to 75 cents per thousand. Currently, we're sitting at 73 and a half cents uh, for 1,000 DEC. So those are the tokens. Uh, speaking of vouchers, um, over the last two weeks, uh, the voucher supply has gone from about 12.1 to 12.2 uh, million vouchers. We've gone up just under 90,000. Um, like I said just a minute ago, a lot of the vouchers have been used uh, for the wild pass. Um, also, people use vouchers for energy. So we're only growing at about um, not quite 6,400 vouchers per day. As you guys know, uh, there are 40,000 vouchers being printed every day. So the fact that we're only going up by 6,000, uh, the voucher supply seems to maybe have leveled off. Uh, of course, there's a lot of talk recently uh, by Matt and other members of the team of either eliminating vouchers completely or making them soul bound are the two directions they're looking at right now. So we'll have to wait and see um, if they do announce that vouchers are just going to be discontinued. Um, you know, if they do some sort of a promo card or some sort of special uh, event, you know, just to drain the remaining vouchers, we'll have to see. Um, how that affects the price. But uh, right now, if you're looking uh, to pick up vouchers for um, your wild pass, you know, 40 of them, you're looking at what, under 70 cents uh, to play in wild for a season if you decide to go that way. Um, SPS burning, um, I'm kind of surprised that we're still burning SPS with DEC being that far under peg. Uh, in the last two weeks, we burned uh, 285,000 SPS. So we're burning about 20,000 SPS uh, per day. And the total supply is sitting at just over uh, 2.8 billion tokens. So that's a look at all the tokens. So now let's take a look at all the packs. So starting with Alpha, and uh, what I did for this is I look at um, Hive Engine and I look at what the asking price is, uh, not the last sell price. Um, the reason I do that is sometimes. Um, someone will sell a pack very cheaply. You know, if someone puts in a very low bid, the bid triggers and it shows that price. Um, what I'm going by are how many um, packs are available on the market and what the cheapest asking price is. So for alpha packs, uh, two weeks ago, the cheapest ask was $63. Uh, currently right now, it's just over $54. So if you want to pick up an alpha pack, you're looking at at least $54. And that is off of Hive Engine, I believe, in game. Um, you're sitting somewhere around 70. Well, let's just take a look. Let's go to the market. Let's go to other items. And this will show packs. Last I saw, I think it was like $69.95 uh, for an alpha pack. So there is a big spread difference there. So wait a second for this to load. And we can kind of compare. Uh, the pack prices uh, that I took them from Hive Engine compared to how they are in game. Okay, so while that is loading, let's just go back um, to Alpha. So, yep, currently, like I said, over, over in Hive, about 54 bucks. And in the last two weeks, um, five packs have been opened. 
We're down to just over 4,200 alpha packs. Um, beta, beta is I think about the only pack price that actually went up over the last uh, two weeks. Uh, betas, a couple weeks ago, the asking price on Hive was a little over $8, and now the asking price is just under $11. And in the last two weeks, 37 beta packs have been opened. Okay, so here if we check in-game, um, yep, 60, basically $69.50 for an alpha pack if you wanted to purchase it in-game. But like I said, if you go to Hive, you can get it for um, an asking price of $54.58. So beta packs currently selling for 1091. That is the asking price. 37 were sold in the last two weeks and opened. Uh, Untamed drifted a little bit lower from just under six uh, to just over five bucks. Um, there was actually 68 more uh, packs um, listed on uh, Peak Monsters, so that amount went up by 68. So I'm not sure if those are um, packs that were brought from a different chain. Um, or why this amount went up, but currently there's just over 44,000 untamed packs that are still uh, available and unopened. Uh, looking at dice, dice went down from 880 down to 760 a pack. Uh, only one dice pack was open in the last two weeks. Um, orb, orb went from 1243 down to just over 10 bucks for a pack of orb. And we went from exactly 7,000 packs down to 6,997. So three orb packs were open in the last couple weeks. And Chaos Legion has kind of hit a floor. Um, you know, for a while we were holding in that 45 to 50 cent range. Uh, we drifted down to 40 and now down to 35. Um, so currently we're sitting at, you know, 34, 34 and a half cents per pack on Hive Engine. So basically we've hit a floor right now currently at around 35 cents. And in the last two weeks, exactly, it's kind of funny, exactly 80,000 packs uh, have been opened in the last two weeks. Uh, Rift Watcher packs actually kind of surprisingly took a bounce up. Even though the uh, value if you open a Rift Watcher pack is around $1.99, it's, it's just under $2 in expected value. Uh, but on Hive, they're asking for $2.70. And in game, they're actually asking for $2.91 a pack for Rift Watchers. So um, Rift Watchers, as you guys know, was um, a very limited set um, over, I believe over about 60% of it was burned. Uh, there is not a lot of Rift Watchers out there. Um, currently, there's about 126,000 Rift Watcher packs that are uh, available for sale. Uh, the Dow does hold a good amount of packs, but um, if you're looking to pick these up, like I said, Decent amount compared to some of the older sets, but still not very many Rift Watcher packs uh, when you compare it to some of the newer sets. And just under 200 uh, Rift Watcher packs were opened in the last two weeks. Uh, Rebellion packs are holding pretty steady, right? Just under $3 a pack. Um, in the last two weeks, we sold, and this number pretty much doubled from the previous two weeks. So we sold about 12,000 packs over the last two weeks. So just over um, 860 packs a day. Two weeks ago when I ran the numbers, we were selling about 6,000 packs over two weeks, so about 400 and some a day. So Rift Watch or Rebellion packs have started to sell in, uh, a little bit more. So currently Rebellion packs circulating, there's 82,000. Most of those are on Mage Wagons. Um, the packs that are unopened and available for sale, the ones that are not staked on Mage Wagons, looks like it's around 8,300 packs. So even though, you know, there's, you know, 900,000 that have been sold, you know, a lot have been opened and a lot of them have been staked on the Mage Wagons. So not very many for sale on the market. Let's take a look in game. Rebellion. So if you look at Rebellion packs available for sale, there's usually only like three people selling them in game. Um, there's one guy. Yep. Ma Cull, or however you say his name, he's usually got 250 packs available for sale, and then just a you know one pack, ten packs here. So basically, there's only one person selling rebellion packs in game. So I thought that was interesting. Okay, so that's it for packs. So now let's get on to sets. So let's go to card sales, and we're going to start as we always do, going all the way back to alpha. So here are all the information for Alpha. Um, as you guys can see, um, 
usually for the regular foil cards there's not a whole lot of movement um, occasionally you will have a buyout of cards and that will spike um, a couple of the prices uh, if you guys have been following the channel and uh, the market watch with me for the last few months you may remember where several months ago some of the commons for alpha were bought out and then relisted uh, i think there was one as high as like above 40 dollars per bcx and it took a few weeks for that to kind of drift back lower so as we see now uh, the cheapest beta or alpha common is 23 cents so pretty much these have been holding 45 to 80 cents for most of the commons so we have this one outlier that's down to 23 cents after that jumps to 37. Uh, the Sil silver shield warrior is the one that did have a buyout a few months ago so this you know normally is about a 40 cent card but someone bought them all out and then relisted a couple copies for over 40 bucks a piece so you have 23 cents for your cheapest uh, alpha common up to um, $1.69 for Giant Rock. Once again, this was a card that was usually around 40 to 50 cents. So you can see someone bought them out. There's only 13 available and they've listed them for you know, $1.69. So those are your alpha commons going for rares. Uh, some of the rares are actually under a dollar now. Usually right around a dollar is the floor. Undead Priest is pretty much by far the cheapest at only 71 cents. And then Stone Golem at 84. So your cheapest um, rare is 71 cents. You can see the liquidity numbers here. So anywhere from, you know, just a handful, there's six to low, low to mid 20s. Uh, most expensive one is Alric. Alric is sitting at just under six dollars at 5.95. So those are your rares. Going for epics, your cheapest alpha epic is two dollars and forty cents. And the most expensive is Serpent of the Flame at $8 even. But once again, look at the liquidity. Very low numbers here, guys. I keep hearing about, you know, they want to bring in new players. They want to bring in, you know, thousands of new players. You can bring them in. And I know this is alpha. They're going to go for the newer sets. But still, if you bring in, let's say, 5,000 players, let's say 50 of them want to get some of the older stuff, they can't even get one of each of these cards. And then looking at legendaries, your cheapest uh, legendary is Frost Giant at 28 bucks. Most expensive is Lightning Dragon at um, just over $250. And now if we look at promo cards. So for your promo cards, you had one of each rarity. Uh, so the Dragon Whelp, the common is 537. So that's down from two weeks ago when he was 776. Uh, the rare promo has stayed the same at 29. The epic promo went from 50 to 150 for the Royal Dragon Archer. So there's only a single copy available, so they were probably bought out, and then he relisted it for $150. And then the most expensive, the legendary promo, is sitting right around 1500 Now if we look at the gold foils. So let's look at the gold foil commons. Can we hit $10 for a gold foil alpha common? So for quite a while, the floor was just under 20 bucks for um, an alpha gold foil common. So now as you can see, there's some cards that have drifted a little bit lower and actually the Haunted Spider is down to $11. So that's your cheapest common, your most expensive. Once again, this should be um, a, a basic uh, common card is sitting at $299. So compared to the next expensive one at 63, you can see where this was, you know, just a buyout and someone's just trying to, you know, try to get a, a super high price for that. Um, there are 20 alpha commons available. <clears throat> Out of the 20, there's only um, 18 that are available for sale. So two of them are not available for sale even on the marketplace. So now looking at rares, your cheapest rare is $142 for the Silver Shield Paladin. And your most expensive is not... Alric. It is actually Malric Inferno. There's a single copy and they're asking $4,000. Uh, the most expensive normal uh, foil rare is Alric. Um, he is only $219. So you can see the huge discrepancy in prices going from regular foil to gold foil. Next, looking at the epics. Uh, Screaming Banshee is the cheapest epic at $346. Uh, most expensive is the Air Elemental at just over $880. And then for your Legendary, there's only a single copy of an Alpha Gold Foil Legendary card. 
and that is Lord of Darkness. There's a single copy available for $9,000. As you guys can see, there's only 21 in existence, 21 in circulation. So if you want to get one, <laughs> that's the only one. All right, so now let us go from Alpha. Oh, let's look at the gold foil promos. So as you can see, the price is from two weeks ago. So commons, the floor was, you know, right around 14. Actually, just since I've been running the numbers and uh, doing the video, let's change this to 11 because there was that spider that was $11. But you can see that just the wild uh, ranges for some of these gold foils, be just because the liquidity is so low and there's so few of them that people can out ask some outrageous prices. Okay, so let's look real quick for gold promos. So there's only two available. So there's a common gold promo for 83.87, um, down slightly from two weeks ago where it was just around 90. There's none of the rares and none of the legendaries available. And then the epic promo two weeks ago was 380 and is now 750 for the Royal Dragon Archer. Okay, so that should wrap up alpha. So now let's look at beta. Just gonna look at the core and the reward cards. So your betas, if you look at uh, normal foils, not a whole lot of movement. Um, you know, the most expensive legendary, you're sitting at 150. Uh, your cheapest common, you're sitting at two cents. So the ranges really haven't um, changed a whole lot. Like I said, every once in a while, you'll get like a weird buyout where you'll get a spike in one of the commons. Like, for instance, um, for the commons here, Skeleton Assassin is usually not the most expensive card um, sitting at. Uh, 58 cents usually he's a lot cheaper but there's only 11 available as you can see next to 169 111 239 so this was a buyout and then just someone listed it higher but currently your most expensive common is the skeleton assassin at 58 cents just kind of scroll through this real quick so we have a record of the prices how many are on the market and the circulation so now let's go to the rares so your cheapest rare, and I like both of these cards, the Crystal Werewolf and the Naga Windmaster. You, you get a monster for a single copy that gives silence and then one that gives headwinds. That is just huge. So if you're someone that plays in wild, um, you definitely want to have at least one of each of these cards. Because, um, you know, I, I very rarely see either one of these played. So if you have rule sets where it's, mag, you know, magic or uh, actually magic only, you can use him. But ranged only, this is a ranged card, and this will reduce the enemies ranged by one. So, very good card, I think, overlooked is Naga Windmaster. I very rarely see that card played. But 13 cents is your cheapest rare. Going on up to Ulric Stormbringer at $3.33. And I believe that is lower from when I just did the numbers earlier. No, nope, it's about the same. So 333 is your cheap, is your most expensive rare. So if you're looking to pick up an Ulrich, you know, for beta, that that is a very good price for what I've seen over the last few months. Okay, looking at epics. So your cheapest epic is the Divine Sorceress sitting at 56 cents. We'll let the graphics load so it loads the correct picture. And then you can see the quantities available. Most expensive epic, $6.77, are for Jal, Jarlax the Undead. And then the legendaries, cheapest legendary for beta, Fallen Spectre at $3.50. Most expensive continues to be Volnamore, sitting at right at $150, where he's been pretty consistently for the last month, month and a half. I think about two, two and a half months ago, he dipped down to um, $75 for a brief time. So that was a buying opportunity when he was under 100. I think he went from 75, then he went 85, 95, and now he's back to his normal, I should say normal price over the last two months at right around $150. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at the gold foils and the promo cards. So if we... <laughs> promo cards <clears throat> you've got dragon dragonling bowman at 17 cents you've got delwyn dragon scale the common 
So this is a common dragon summoner for 26 cents. <coughs> so for quite a while, he was in the 70, 75 cent range. Then he was around the 50 range. So now he's down to just over a quarter. So if you're looking to pick up a summoner, you know, especially a dragon summoner at a great price, you know, 26 cents, this is as low as I've seen since I've started doing the market watch. Uh, you will need a lot of copies of him because he is a common card. So if you want to max him out, it's 505, which are probably nowhere near that available on the market. But if you're not looking to max one out, you just want to get to a decent level. You know, 25 copies for a level five for basically a max silver summoner is not bad. So you're looking at what a little over six bucks, under seven bucks to get a dragon summoner that's basically max silver. Plus he gives plus one magic. So just wanted to keep you give you an uh Heads up there, so you can see I have one. Okay, Fiendish Harpy, the Epic, is sitting at $1.06. And then for the Legendaries, Red Dragon uh, went from 10 just down slightly to $9.42. Archmage Arius, a little over $700. And Prince Julian, single copy for $7,300. So you can see where that is from two weeks ago. Okay, <clears throat> now let's look at the gold foil versions. So since we're here, let's just look at the gold foils. So six ninety five for Delwyn Dragon Scale, uh, Dragonling Bowman sixteen fifty, Fiendish Harpy eighty five ninety four, <clears throat> and two copies of the Red Dragon at fourteen hundred for your cheapest copy. <clears throat> now for your regular cards, so your cheapest beta common card. You're looking at $1.64 for the Eaton Sperman, all the way up to the most expensive one is the Cobalt Miner at $24.75. So these two, I think, are kind of an outlier. I think, you know, the max price range should be around $8 to $10 uh, for the most expensive Beta Common. But as you can see, there's only four copies of each of these. So these were probably a targeted buyout and then they were relisted re higher. So those are your beta commons. Looking at the rares, uh, your cheapest beta gold foil rare is $8.61 for the Boogeyman. Some good cards here, Enchanted Pixie, Haunted Spirit, Silver Shield Assassin. So some very affordable gold foil commons, or I should say gold foil rares from beta. The chicken, I can remember the chicken being 20 bucks for a regular foil, $17 for a gold. Prismatic Energy, another great card. A couple summoners. So your most expensive <clears throat> is surprisingly Stone Splitter Orc at $56. So once again, this is just an outlier. All three of these cards I think are outliers because usually the most expensive gold foil rare is Ulrich, your summoner. Um, he is currently at $29.20. So the Beetle Queen, the Jester, and the Stone Splitter Orc, I think we're all buyouts. As you can see, five copies, two and two. So don't don't pay these prices. These these will probably come down in the next few weeks. And then going for epics, your cheapest beta epic gold foil, Imp Bowman at So we scroll down, most expensive, a single copy of Mischievous Mermaid for $700. And now your gold foil beta legendary cards. Cheapest is the Lightning Dragon at $335, only one copy available. And as you can see, there's only a handful of any of these available. Single copies of everyone on this bottom row. Hydra, $1,250. Lord of Darkness, $1,275. Prince Renan, $1,400. Peak Rider, 1400 and a single copy, Gold Foil Volnamore, for $1,775. So extremely rare cards, extremely low print run, and very, very pricey. Okay, so we went through all the Gold Foils. So now let's move on to Untamed, where there's a couple surprises in Untamed. So let's start with the regular Foil cards. And let's just look at the cord reward. So once again, for the regular foil cards, until you get to the legendaries, really not a whole lot of change. You know, your commons are going to be a penny. 
um, you know, 100,000 or more were printed. But still, some very good cards. So if these, if you do play in wild, there are some very, very powerful commons that you can pick up at a good price. You know, Parasitic Growth, you know, we have that neutral rule set. Very good card to have, only two cents per BCX. You know, Sandworm, Goblin Thief, uh, Mantoid, you know, Flame Monkey, Demented Shark. Um, two cards that I wanted to point out to you guys, Failed Summoner and Serpentine Spy. Now, a couple of months ago, the Failed Summoner was up to like 90 cents uh, per BCX, drifted down to 30. So 20 to 30 cents per BCX has been his norm for quite some time. Now it's down to 6 cents. Same thing with uh, Serpentine Spy. You know, this was usually 18 to 25 cent card, somewhere in that range. So to get both of these cards under 10 cents, you know, six cents a piece. If you don't have these cards or if you do and you're looking to pick up a few more copies to level them, this is definitely the time to do it. Same thing with Demented Shark, you know, having that Inspire, you know, and it's only four cents. You know, why not pick up some of these Undead Badger for three cents? So some very, very affordable uh, Untamed Common cards. Okay, and let's look at the rares. So now for your rare cards... Are your cheapest is four cents for the Temple Priest. We'll let it load so it loads the graphics. There we go. So you can see the correct pictures of all the cards. Luminous Eagle, another good card I like to have. Eight cents. Look at this. Ten cents for um, an untamed summoner, Mother Kala. So once again, if you're looking to pick up a summoner for wild, you know, 25 copies. If you can get them all at 10 cents, 250. You've got a max silver summoner for wild. So let's see how many are available. So there's only a few at 10 cents and then it starts going up to 20. But still, even if you have to pay on average 20 cents each, that's still not bad. Um, there are no max copies available. So there's one level six, a level four, and then you've just got, you know, four or five copies of each and then single copies. So not much on the market, but still, if you just want to get one or two just to have in your deck, fantastic price. Can't beat that. Ten cents also for Contessa. Uh, Thirteen cents for Bordas. Now, this is another one that had been consistently in the 30, 40 cent range. He's down to 13 cents. I think I might pick uh, some of him up because I do have a copy of him and I would like to get him leveled up. Uh, Shield Bearer. So funny to see this card at 14 cents. I mean, this card was... Multiple dollars, it seems like not that long ago, you know, five, five to ten bucks, and now it's 14 cents a piece. Uh, Living Lava, great card, 15 cents. Tower Griffin, you know, another neutral card. So if you're looking at neutral and then also Little League, great card to have, only 18 cents. Uh, True Speaker, 28 cents. Unicorn Mustang is the most expensive at 35. Ice Pixie at 20 cents. So very, very good deals, I think, for some of the untamed cards. Let's look at epics. Most uh, cheapest epic is Onyx Sentinel at 20 cents. And as we scroll on down, Coral Wraith, another card that's just an awesome card. You know, Little League, that sneak magic damage, which is a very rare combination. He's great to have. Sporcerer, another one with Rust. He's great. Lobstradamus. Uh, most expensive is 446 for the Goblin Fire Mage. And now everyone's favorite. Let's look at the legendaries. So your cheapest untamed legendary is $1.15 for the Spirit, Spirit Druid Grog. Weird name. And most expensive, of course, is Kitty. So Kitty, uh, two weeks ago, was at $55. So Kitty has rebounded back to $70. Uh, Llama stayed the same, you no, know, just under $39. Yoden's come down a little bit from $38 to $32. And then Kron's been bouncing around that $11 to $18 range, it seems like, forever. Uh, this week he's down from $13 down to right around $11.50. So Kitty has started to rebound a little bit. Um, if you were looking to pick one up, looks like two weeks ago was your time when it was around $50. Bucks, so... Trying to, um, looking forward to see if uh, Kitty in the next couple weeks is it going to hover, you know, around that sixty-five to seventy-five dollar range, or is it going to drift back down to fifty? You know, where is it going to go from here? But it has had a nice uh, rebound in the last couple weeks. Uh, some other cards I wanted to point out too. If you're looking for legendary summoners, uh, ten bucks for Lear, uh, twelve bucks for Chanceus, fourteen bucks for Mimosa. 
uh, Yoden, Yoden for you know just over 30 bucks. So some pretty good prices, I think, for uh, some of these legendary summoners. Okay, so now let's look at the promo cards. So the promo cards for Untamed, you only had epic and legendary, so there were no common or rares. Uh, the big surprise is Halfling Alchemist. Halfling Alchemist had been drifting lower and lower and lower for the last few months, you know, from five to four to three. Two weeks ago, he was a buck fifty, so I'm not sure why he spiked back up to six dollars. Was this a buyout? I mean, there's only nine copies available, and the cheapest is just under six bucks. So this this is kind of an outlier. This is kind of strange. Same thing with Chain Golem. You know, Chain Golem had been um, a $20 card, 21 bucks. Now this week he's 850. So just a very weird kind of flipping halfling alchemist going up by multiples and then chain golem going down by multiples. And then the mighty Drickin has um, gone just down a little bit from 1200 uh, to $1,000. Okay, so now let's look at the gold foil versions. So since we're already here, so for your gold foils, um, there are no gold foil as soon as this will load. There is no gold foil mighty Drickin. But the Halfling Alchemist is sitting at 7275 for the gold foil, three copies. And the Chain Golem is at $82.10, five copies available. So you can see that right here. Uh, no gold foils for the Mighty Drickin. So if we look at the regular set, the Corn Reward, let's look at the gold foil. So for your commons, your cheapest gold foil is 42 cents for the Wave Runner. Going all the way up to the most expensive common is not Failed Summoner, it's not Sandworm, it's not Serpentine Spy, it is Biceratops. Why is this a $37.62 card? Someone bought it and listed it for that ridiculous price. Do not buy that card. Okay, let's go to rare. Okay, Grim Reaper is a dollar seventy-five. That's your cheapest rare gold foil. Going on up to the most expensive, ten dollars for the giant squid. So once again, a buyout. Do not pay ten dollars for a giant squid. Not when you can get a gold foil uh, summoner for seven dollars for Contessa. Where are the other summoners? Wow. 275 for a gold foil bordis. That is very tempting. Drake of Arnak, $2.90. Mother Kala, $2.32 for a gold foil. And Pyre, $2.12 for a gold foil summoner. So I wanted to point those out. So let's look at epics. So your cheapest gold foil epic. For Untamed, $10.13 for the Pyromaniac. Most expensive, $148.44 for Pyromancer. Once again, a buyout. There was only a single copy. Do not buy that card. That is just a ridiculous price. So you can see, normal price for a gold foil. Um, Epic is right around $20. Bucks, somewhere between $50 to 20 bucks for uh, gold foil epic and then your legendary cards your cheapest gold foil legendary is just under a hundred dollars for um, Villa the Radiant there's a Cornelius for hundred and twenty two dollars Dragon Jumper for hundred and twenty eight and then of course if we look at the most expensive most expensive has actually come down in price quite a bit Kitty one thousand dollars for a gold foil so it come came down last uh, two weeks ago down to eleven hundred i believe before that it was around fourteen fifty so gold foil kitty for a thousand dollars uh llama went down a little bit from 380 down to 360. uh yoden a few months ago people were asking fifty five hundred dollars for a gold foil yoden then it was i believe thirty five hundred dollars for a gold foil yoden then five hundred dollars now gold foil Yoden people are asking 275. So just Yoden has continued to just plummet in price. Uh, Kron seems to usually hit between 200 and 250, right in that range. So currently gold foil Kron is just under 200 bucks. Uh, Almo Cambio, this was the most expensive gold foil two weeks ago at 1475. Uh, now it is down to 500 dollars. 
And uh, another card I'd like to track, the Robo Dragon Knight, pretty much staying the same at 160 bucks. And we already looked at the promo cards. So that is it for Untamed. So next is Dice. Very small set. We'll go through this very quickly. You can see it looks like not a whole lot has changed, but there are some couple cards that I do want to point out to you guys. So if we look at the commons, let's look at dice, very small set, commons one to three cents. You know, most of these I think are just kind of blah, not really cards that you want to target, other than maybe Battering Ram being neutral, Little League, Opportunity is decent, and Flamesmith with the Shatter. So those are two decent cards, three cents a piece. Now let's look at the rares because those are the summoners. Um, Mylor had been between two to three bucks. Uh, two weeks ago, Mylar was $1.24. Now he's up slightly to $1.38. But look at Lorna Shine, under a dollar for a Lorna Shine. So, um, an ouster as well, 50 cents for an ouster. Um, Bright and Bloom, 47 cents. So, some of these summoners are very good. You know, we, we know if you've played Splinterlands for quite a while, you know how good these cards are. So, to be able to pick them up for, you know, 50 cents to a dollar is just incredible. Uh, looking at your epics, of course, there's only a handful, uh, 24 cents to 84 cents for your epics. And then your legendary cards, Lendmaster, you're looking at 242. Uh, most expensive ones, Kralis at 28.71, and Epona is sitting at $75. And then for your gold foil versions, uh, your gold foils are going to be 50 cents to a dollar. Nice round numbers there for your commons. Your rares, which are your summoners. Uh, Mylor, a couple weeks ago, where's the gold foil? It was 10 bucks. Him and uh, Lorna Shine were both right around that $10 range. Um, Lorna Shine might actually have been, I think, under seven. I think she was like 680 two weeks ago, if I remember right. But still, you know, $7.40 for a gold foil Lorna Shine is very tempting. And Mylor, even at 16, is not a bad price. Uh, we remember years ago when Mylor was, what, $30, $40 a BCX just for the regular foil. So, you know, $16 isn't too bad. Hopefully, if you guys wanted one, you picked one up um, a couple weeks ago when he was around 10 Then looking at epics, epics are right around that $11 to $13 range for those. And for your uh, gold foil legendary cards, look at the low numbers, single copies of some of these. So under 10 for all of these gold foil legendaries. Ranging in price from $75 for Poseidon up to $9.99 for the Nightshade. Only a single copy available. That is it for Dice. Now if we get to Orb. Once again, another set I love going through in these videos because it is such a small set. It is so easy to go through. So your common cards, $0.3 to $0.05 cents for your commons. Armor Smith, most expensive. Next are your rares, Silver Shield uh, Bard. Uh, a few weeks ago, someone did a buyout of these and they listed them and they were above $2. It was like $2.90 for a Bard. You know, that was just once again a targeted buyout. Usually these are right around this range, 15 to 25 cents for the rares. Epics, um, these had been as high as two or $3 per BCX. So these have both come down quite a bit. I still need to pick up uh, Dwarven Wizard. I've been meaning to do that for a while because I still do play in wild. So to be able to get um, something, you know, for the neutral only rule sets, Little League rule set with magic damage and, and snipe, very good card. So now that he's under a dollar, I, I seriously need to target him. Uh, I do have some mermaid, heal, uh, mermaid healer, but I do need more of those, of course, to level up. But then again, I need more of all these cards. And then your legendaries, Lord of Fire, just under... Four dollars and up to corrupted Pegasus for fifteen bucks. So not a whole lot of movement from where they were. Uh, let's look at the gold foils now. It's your cheapest gold foil commons. You're looking at two bucks. Actually, the armor smith, which is the most expensive of regular foil, is the cheapest gold foil. So just under two bucks for the armor smith. Uh, might be a good idea to pick these up if you don't have them. As you notice, for a single copy, they do start at level four, not level three. Um, so that is something to keep in mind for some of these older sets, beta and uh, and dice or in orb. You know, if you get a, a common, you start at level four. 
the rares. The bard is sitting at 10 bucks. The undead archer at 13. And surprisingly, electric eels is the most expensive at 1890 for the rare. Looking at the epics, there's only one. There's only two epics in the set, and there's only one available now, and it's $1,100. Once again, a buyout and just a ridiculous price. Where was that two weeks ago? 38 to 499. <clears throat> yeah, I think $38 was for the other one, for the mermaid healer. So that one's gone. But yeah, 1100 for a dwarven wizard. And then for your legendary Lord of Fire, sitting at right around a thousand, Corrupted Pegasus, 1275, single copies of each of these, and then two copies of the Minotaur Warlord. Um, cheapest one is $1,358. All right, so that's it for the older sets. So now we're getting to more of the modern. So now we're getting to Chaos Legion, everyone's favorite set that everyone loves. Chaos Legion, a couple of surprises here. Um, one of the surprises will be in the rares. So the normal cards, as you can see, Penny for the commons, over a million in circulation. Most expensive common <clears throat> continues to be the Scalver Hireling. He bounces around between, it seems like, 5 and 14 cents you know, every couple weeks, but he is the most expensive, if you, will, if you want to call it that, common at 6 cents. Looking at rares, the one surprise here, Venari Wavesmith, cheapest at two cents. Let's see if this has changed. Okay, it has changed. So when I went through the numbers and put everything in, Kelia was sitting at 20 cents and Thaddeus Brood was actually sitting at 21. So it was the first time that I had seen Kelia not be the most expensive rare or the most expensive summoner in Chaos Legion, but that has changed in uh, the last couple of hours. So now Kelia is back up to being the most expensive, but still only 21 cents. Um, your epic cards, you're looking at uh, eight cents for some of the cheapest epics. Up to the most expensive is 32 cents for the Magi of Chaos. And your legendary cards Harclaw, 42 cents. Jinoshanis at 43. And once again, if you guys have not picked up some of these legendary cards, so many of them are under a dollar. Look at this Grandmaster Wraith under two bucks quicks two dollars and fifty cents concert yasik conquer yasik 268 astral entity 276 lily under three dollars at 290 possibilis the wise at 331 immortalis is the most expensive legendary card and it's just barely over five bucks okay let's look at promos <clears throat> so your promo cards, let's start with the commons. So Archimus the Bear is sitting at four cents. So two weeks ago he was eleven, so that's really come down, as has Bruise. Bruise was sitting at twenty cents two weeks ago, and he's down to thirteen. So those are your commons. Now your legendary cards. Oh sure, um, drifted lower from seven eighty five to six fifty. Dr. Blight continues to stay under 10 bucks. He was 946, now he's 935. Uh, Zerial's come down from 18 down to 13. Uh, Waka's come down from 350 to 200. Uh, Lux Vega has gone up um, 180 to 225. So this is pretty much the range I've seen Lux Vega, I think, as long as I've been doing the market watches. The cheapest I've seen it is 180, and the most expensive is about 240. So it usually is right around that 200 to $220 range. Zerial is usually 13 to 15 range. Dr. Blight had been for quite a while, 15 to 20. Now he's um, drifted under 10. I did pick up a copy a few weeks ago. I always wanted to have a Dr. Blight. So once he got down, I think to like 11 or 12 bucks, I think I picked one up. I'm just glad to have the card. Uh, let's look now at the gold foil version. So since we're here on promos, uh, your gold foil commons, Archimus the Bear, you're sitting at 74 cents. Bruise, $1.14. And then your legendaries, <coughs> oh sure, just over 48 bucks. Dr. Blight, for is this going to hit 50 bucks for a Dr. Blight? He's sitting at 57.24, $100 even for a gold foil cereal. <coughs> and Waka, two copies available, 1250 bucks. 
So there are no Lux Vegas. There hasn't been a Lux Vega for quite a while, gold foil on the market. Uh, now let's look at gold foil commons. There's a couple things in here that kind of surprised me. So let's look at gold commons. So the thing that surprised me is not the fact that um, some of the cheapest commons are around 12 to 14 cents. That's been kind of usual. Um, the thing that surprised me was when I looked at max copies because I wanted to pick up um, either another Pelicor Mercenary or a Pelicor Bandit. Wait a minute, where's Pelicor Bandit? That's usually here. That's usually 13 to 15 cents. Where is the Pelicor Bandit? Huh, where is the Pelicor Bandit? There it is. Oh, it's come down in price. When I first um, did this video, the only copies of Pelicor Bandit that were available were like $3.80. That was the cheapest one. So someone now has put some down for 44 cents, which is still many multiples higher of what it was. These are the ones that I saw earlier when I started to do the video. $3.80 was the cheapest one. And I'm like, what in the world? Why is it $3.80 for the cheapest one? But as you can see, now there's someone that's put, you know, quite a few um, available for sale, but still 44 cents is triple of where it was not too long ago. But the thing that I wanted to talk about were the max level copies. Now, I've been able to get max um, gold foil commons from Chaos Legion, usually around uh, 5 to $7. And the ones that I targeted, like I said, were uh, the Pelicor Bandit and uh, the Pelicor Mercenary. As you can see, there's no max copies of Pelicor Mercenary available. So even though that's a reward card and they printed tons of them, there's just none on the market. And even the Pelicor Bandit. You know, there's only three max copies available, and they're asking at least 15 bucks a piece, where this was a five to six dollar card. So these cards, you know, are starting to dry up. Now I don't know if that means more and more people are doing like I am, and they're slowly activating their land, and you know they're going the max gold foil common route or what. But there's not very many copies of some of these available. I mean, look, these are max level ones, six available, one, two, two, one. So there's not a lot of these available if you're looking to just buy a max level one and plop it on land. So. Just wanted to let you guys know that. But just for a single copy, you're looking at $0.12 cents to $1.17. So Scavo Hireling is usually the most expensive, you know, just over a dollar. So that's pretty much normal. Uh, looking at rares. So now your cheapest rare is $0.65 cents for the Stalker. Most expensive um, two weeks ago was the Infiltrator. Now it's back down to $0.94. Cents. Uh, look at this though for gold foils. Most of the summoners, you know, buck and a half to two bucks. Uh, Thaddeus Brood is sitting at 334 and Kelly is at six bucks. So Kelly has gone up uh, quite a bit from two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, Kelly was not the most expensive. The most expensive was the Damp Dampier Infiltrator at three bucks. I think Kelly was like 270 or 280. So that one has definitely gone up. And actually, this has gone up since I um, recorded the video. Once I uh, went through the numbers earlier, there weren't any Kellyas on the market at all. So now someone has dropped a few at six bucks. Just to show you how quickly the market can change in just a couple hours. Okay, gold foil epics. So these are the cards I like also to target for land. So if I can't pick up a max gold foil common, usually what I'll do is I'll pick up a couple of copies of a gold foil epic. Um, each one. Each BCX requires only a thousand DEC, so you know if I'm looking to pick up, you know what is it, 660 production points per card, um, and I only have to spend, you know, the cost of the card and then a thousand DEC. This is usually the route I go. So once again, these are sitting right around the three to four dollar mark. Uh, the one outlier is Tuss the Wide. There's three copies available, and they're asking 1282. So. Once again, don't buy the outlier. You know, if you need to buy um, a fire card, you know, you can go a lot cheaper. Get your Gin and Fernie for 385 or your Lava Launcher for 335. But still, just wanted to uh, point out these are still sitting pretty much in the three to four dollar range for your Gold Foil Epics, and then your Gold Foil Legendary card, uh, Legionnaire Alvar, sitting at just under 16 bucks. He is the cheapest, and your most expensive Gold Foil Legendary. A single copy available of Immortalis for $59. That is it. Okay, so we went through all of that. And as you can see how it changed just from when I started putting the numbers together. 
a couple hours ago, the most expensive, someone was asking $95 for a back Jira. Now there's a um, copy for $58. Okay, so let's go to Rift Watchers, and then we're going to wrap up this with Rebellion. So let's go to Rift Watchers. Don't think there was a whole lot of movement in Rift Watchers. Uh, your normal cards, one to seven cents for your commons. Really nothing too exciting there. Your rares, seven cents to 51 cents for Queen of Crows. She continues to be the most expensive rare. For quite a while, she was in the 70 to a dollar range, 70 cents to a buck. So she's come down to about 50 cents. Uh, Epics. One thing that kind of uh, surprised me on Epics, I think, was the gold foil prices. We'll get to that in a minute. But for your gold foil, or for your regular foil Epics, which are your summoners, uh, Dalin's not the cheapest. So Aquatus at 24 cents, Scargore at 27, Dalin at 28, this but 74 cents, dollar 17 for Fernhart, and Ilthane, which for the longest time was three to five bucks, has now um, consistently been under two. So it's sitting at a dollar 90. And then your legendary cards, uh, Rune Master Atwat is sitting at $1.34. And most expensive, Inevitable, which has been as high as uh, $35 recently. He's down under $20 now. He's sitting at $19.30. So let's look at the gold foil versions, your gold foil commons. Um, you're looking at $0.24 cents to $1.30 for a common. For your rare, $0.75 cents up to... Queen of Crows isn't the most expensive. It's Cabalist at $2.95. Your Epics, which are your Summoners. This is what surprised me. Scargore is actually more expensive than Ilthane. That seems kind of backwards, but Scargore is sitting at $13.16. And then your Gold Foil Legendaries. Uh, Runemancer Kai is actually the cheapest at $24.49. Most expensive is Inevitable. Three copies available, and the cheapest being... $190. So gold foil um, legendaries from Rift Watcher seems still to be holding, you know, pretty decent value. All right. So that is it for Rift Watchers. So now let's wrap up this long video with Rebellion. Okay. So let's look at Rebellion and let's look at some of the key legendary cards. So, four cents for your cheapest common. As you can see, just under 10,000 on circulation. Up in two. And here is a buyout that has happened just in the last hour or so. There's only two copies available of the Mystic, and they're asking $12 a piece. So, normally, as you can see, you usually have a hundred, couple hundred of each of the commons available in the market at a time. Look how easy it is for someone to just come in buy you know all a couple hundred of these for a few cents a piece and then relist them cheaper or relist them higher i should say okay now this looks a little bit better 15 cents for a copy not 12 bucks let me refresh the page and see if it kind of refreshes at normal okay that's a little bit better so four cents for the endless ape up to 31 cents okay that seems to make a little bit more sense so now let's go to the rares so for your rares your cheapest is sea dog of eight sitting at 15 cents up to i can kind of guess avina the wolf and moxian rebel continue to be the most expensive but they're drifting lower in price avina is just over a dollar now moxian rebel is a dollar 63 your epics, 80 cents for the cheapest epic from Rebellion, up to 250 for Captain Fellblade. And now for your legendary cards, cheapest legendary, $3.81 for Lord Thanalor. And most expensive, surprisingly, is not Lorcas, it's not Cryptic, it's Rage. So Rage is sitting at $21. Now, when I did the numbers just not too long ago, uh, Rage had gone from two weeks ago when it was at 1516 and there was a copy available for 24.38. So you can see just in the last hour, hour and a half, um, that's come down to 21. So market prices swing very wildly. But just looking at how they've gone over the last two weeks, Kai's pretty much stayed the same. A cane came down a couple of bucks. <clears throat> Rage had that big boost from $15 to 24. 
Now currently he's at 21. Uh, Darg, exactly the same, 1584. Venka, right around 22 bucks. Uh, Lorcus, pretty much unchanged from 20 bucks to 19. And Cryptic is the new kid on the block, so Cryptic is now right around $15. So we'll track him and see where he goes um, over the next couple of weeks. But those are some of the key legendary cards. And now looking at the gold foil versions. <clears throat> For quite a while, your cheapest uh, gold foil, uh, Common and Rebellion, was always over a dollar. It was like $1.10, $1.20 for the cheapest. So the gold foils have actually really come down in price for Rebellion. So now you're looking at 72, 74, 76 cents for a gold foil common. So if you've been looking to pick up the gold foil cards, now is a good time, at least for the commons. So 72 cents up to 395 for the soldier. Uh, your rare card cheapest is Rekla the Summoner for 320. Most expensive rare. $16 for Moxian Rebel, followed closely by Avena the Wolf for 11 you know, the top two rares. And for Epics, you're sitting at $17.79 for Harbinger of Chaos, up to $38 for Executioner Kron. Those are your Epics, but once again, look at how low the numbers are that are available on the market. So these prices can change wildly at any time. And then for your legendary cards, your cheapest um, gold foil legendary card for Rebellion is $90. Most expensive, look at this guy, is one copy of Kai for $750. So looking at where they were two weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago you could pick up a Kai for $130. Now you're looking at $750. Um, a cane has gone down a little bit. There was no Rage gold foil two weeks ago. Now you're looking at $235. Uh, Darg's come down from basically 220 to 160. Rush has stayed the same at 148. Nalar has gone from 119 to 129. There are no gold foil Venkas. Let's see if that's changed since I started running all these numbers. Nope. There is no gold foil Venka on the market. And Lorcus is sitting at 179. And then finally for your promo cards... Just look at all of them here. So Grimbarden Smith, uh, three fifty for the regular foil, and thirty three ninety five for the gold foil. Um, Mantaroth has come down. You know, about a month ago he was forty seven. I believe two weeks ago he was what thirty seven was it? Yep, thirty seven fifty two weeks ago. Now he's down to thirty one. Uh, the gold foil a month ago was like six seventy. So now it's down to three hundred for the gold foil Mantaroth. Only three copies available. Um, and then the newer ones, Henchling Enforcer at 77 cents, Gold Foil at 7.92, and Baron Fiat 643 for the regular foil, 125 for the gold foil. So both of those have come down a little bit. So there you have it, guys. Sorry for the super long video, but we only do this once every two weeks, so it's good. I like to do an in-depth view of the market overall. Um, not just SPS, DEC, and vouchers and all that. I love looking at the old pack prices and seeing how many um, packs are left. And then just kind of, kind of taking a deep dive set by set and just seeing uh, what the market's looking like. Are there good deals? Are there cards going down? You know, are there certain cards that have spiked just kind of out of the blue? So enjoy doing these type of videos. Hope you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, next week, we will do the Land Market Watch. And two weeks from today... Uh, we will do episode number 15 of the Market Watch, so stay tuned for that. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, if there's any topics you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. And until next time, stay the course, keep on forging, have fun. We'll see you soon. Take care.